Welcome to Ask Stago, expert answers to your expert questions. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new episode of Ask Stago, the podcast dedicated to answer to the question that you may have about our products or hemostats in general. My name is Ceci Roque, Project Line Manager, and I'm really glad to be the co-host of this new episode. As usual, I am joined by Audrey Carlo, our Scientific Marketing Manager. Hello, Audrey. Hello, Cécile. Audrey, what is the subject of today's podcast? So today we will talk about the mean normal post from mean time for the INR determination, you know, for VK patient follow-up. We will see together how to determine it in the most effective way. Thank you, Audrey. And to answer to today's question, we are welcoming Arnaud Rouvier. Arnaud, hello. Hello, everyone. Arnaud, you are our manager of the international support application team at Stago, but you are most of all a former customer and internal trainer. So now let's jump into our first question. What is the mean normal proton bin time, Arnaud? And uh, what is the importance of data magnitude? So as you know, human beings are not homogeneous. We all differ from each other as human and we're all influenced by our origins or environment. In coagulation, it means that the expected normal values will differ depending on your local population. The mean normal protromin time is here to take into account all those variations and to help you to normalize, let's say, your result interpretation depending on your patient population. As you mentioned, Arno, indeed, each laboratory will be impacted by several factors, such as the localization, the environment, but also probably about the different health condition of the patient population. For example, I suppose that some private labs will see people less dramatically sick than hospitals. On top of this, we should take into account the technical condition, pre-analytical condition, the reagents used, the analyzer, and probably the calculation method. Yeah, when I was a, a trainer, I like to say that you have to see that the goal of the MNT is basically to standardize results between labs. So it means that if I go to a lab in the same city and I, and I change it the next week, I want the results to be um, comparable. So no matter you have different practices, you provide a standardized result. So Arno, can you remind us when uh, should I use the mean normal pronto mean time? Sure. The MNPT, the mean normal pronto mean time, again, is meant to be used for the calculation of the INR. Uh, it means that the determination must be done for each new batch of reagent and or for each instrument. And can you tell us the best way to determine it, Arno? Of course, or I can try at least. But <laughs> you need to focus on the sample selection, actually. It must come from at least 20 healthy individuals, adults, who are not under any kind of treatment that could interfere with coagulation. So it means no VK, no heparin, nor antibiotics, for instance. Uh, it's quite common to say healthy individuals, but it's more without any defect known to affect coagulation. Uh, this is what really matters, actually. Yeah, the consideration of healthy uh, for coagulation is important here, uh, as patient can be there for some medical follow-up without relation to coagulation troubles initially. And one question that we have a lot, Arno, is are pregnant women allowed? Technically, you should exclude pregnant women or any woman on oral contraception uh, globally, as it may interfere with coagulation. And of course, I suppose that the group you are selecting uh, should be balanced as regards to age and gender as well. Completely right. Additionally, you have to exercise care in the sample handling. So it means you must contribute them in accordance with the current guideline and laboratory practices, as well as you should measure and record for each sample at least the PT. Any sample falling outside the lab range, normal range, I mean, should be excluded. And then, how should I calculate it? For the calculation, you should use the geometric mean of the measured PTs for all the selected samples. Yeah, by the way, it makes me think that uh, all applications specialists can provide you an Excel template if you want to calculate it upon request, so don't hesitate any second to ask them for it. Or you can also use dedicated menus that are maybe uh, available on your data managers. And Arno, uh, majority of your advices are coming from the Annex 6 of the WHO Technical Report 979. 
Um, do you have any extra tips or recommendation that you may have and use to provide? Sure, with pleasure. If you are using the same batch of reagents, the MNPT should be determined over several dates. So usually we say a minimum of three days in order to take into account the inter-day variability of your technique. So it means different kind of vial period of using the reagent in your vial, different users and so on. Secondly, it's quite important to process each sample separately. No pooling, this is the key. So you will think that you will save time, but actually it will shorten your results and therefore you may not be able to detect any poor sample. And I have a last question. You said that any lab should have different MNPTs, but what if I have different instruments in my lab? Uh, should I determine a common MNPT or dedicated one? So it's quite a common question, actually, but I would say it depends on your local practices. What's important here is at first to perform the MNPT determination on every single instrument. And then if you want to average all individuals mean normal time for all the instruments, then it's your decision. It has to be taken by the lab director. There is no formal recommendation to favor one option to the other. So it is over for today's podcast. Thank you so much, Arnaud, for all your precious uh, tips and tricks about MMPT. Uh, it is now time to close this episode. Uh, thank you all for listening and thank you for the right to be here as usual. Please feel free to send us any question that you may have uh, uh, by email at the address ask at stago.com and we'll be glad to answer uh, it in the next session. So see you next time. This podcast is brought to you by Stago. Diagnostics is in our blood.